Who? The new boss. Oh. I've got a meeting with her this morning. Oh, yeah, well, watch yourself. Bit of a serious man-eater is what I hear. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, here's one. If you had to sleep with your boss in order to further your career, would you do it? Good God, of course not. Oh, I would. Mm, you'd sleep with her if she just fired you. True. <laughs> but I wouldn't spend the night. <laughs> Morning, Jim. Please consider none of the above as administratively active until the interdepartmental consensus has been established. Once ratified, these new objectives must be seen as subaltering current sub-objectives 1 to 4 as outlined in all previous documentation. Read that back to me, will you? Read what back to you, Pumpkin? The letter. Oh, I thought we were chatting. <laughs> How in the name of God, even as a temp, have you managed to hold down secretarial employment? Well, everyone thinks I'm nice and cheery, don't they? I just sort of jolly everyone along. And if that doesn't work, I sleep with them. <laughs> Am I the only person left with any standards? Am I the only one in this entire office who wouldn't sleep with someone just to keep their job? <laughs> you want to watch it, you do. What I hear about your new boss. Uh, what, 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 what do you hear? Oh, just something the girls were saying this morning. What? Nothing. Now, you've remembered, I'm giving my talk today to all the divisional managers. Conference hall, 10 o'clock. The sink is still blocked. Prue, didn't you manage to get hold of maintenance? The phone isn't working. Oh, is it marvellous? <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Do you want me to have a look at it? I'm ever so good with plumbing. You just get maintenance, Prue. No, really, I've got such an affinity with toilets. Maintenance. <laughs> Do you want me to get that? That would be nice. Hello, Mr. Platt's office. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Platt. Uh, your suit and shirt. What? Your wife, she's fine. Said she changed her mind about the suit you should wear for the talk. Mr. Today. Platt. She uses one of our bikes so she can just... Mr. Platt. Listen, shh, quiet. Listen, put Dobbin over there. And listen, Nigel, if she phones again, tell her she's a deranged old sow and Transactors Dispatch Riders are not her personal property. You're a deranged old sow and Transactors <laughs> Dispatch Riders are not your personal property. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to be young. It's your wife, Mr. Platt. <laughs> Sorry about that, darling. Little misunderstanding. Oh, it's some stupid temp they've given me. Angela's still not back. We were talking about this other sow, and she really is terrible. I was only going to say your motorbike man took the wrong suit. Darling, we were three hours choosing the suit I've got on. All right, and I've only got to talk to the divisional managers. Norman? Norman, are you there? Mr. Platt, I'm running ahead. I'll do you now. Norman, are you there? I, uh, darling, I, I must go. But your suit! Come in, come in. Right, uh, sorry. <clears throat> You're giving a talk to the divisional managers, aren't you? Shortly, yes. I'll be there. Good. In the meantime, I've been reviewing your work for the company. Ah, right. I like what I see. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I think I can do things with you. 
Well, that's, that's, that's good, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that, that's great. We can definitely do things. Yeah, I'm sure we can. Jason, hold all my calls. I don't want to be interrupted for any reason, Claire. Yes, Miss Drummond. Confidentially, very confidentially, there's a new senior executive position opening up. Really? Well, I, 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 actually, I, I didn't know. Some people might think you were ideal. I might, too. I very well might. My God. You're surprised. Uh, well, it wasn't what I, was, what I was expecting. Not what people told you about me? Uh, uh, no. There's a catch to this new appointment, Ah, uh, Right, yes. Well, there's always a catch, isn't there? Sex. <laughs> Pardon? Sex, Norman. I can call you Norman, can't I? Yes. Sex is the catch, Norman. Okay. Down to business. I've only got ten minutes before my meeting with the CEO. On the desk. I'll be back in a moment. Now? Well, oh, now is good for me, Norman. Is it good for you? <laughs> It's a new world, Norman, with new rules. But I guess you're starting to realize that. What? <laughs> On the desk. As I say, catches, they want to appoint a woman to this new post. Strictly between you and me. I think you're the right person for the job. The trouble is, it's fairly noticeable that you're a man. So how does it feel to be on the receiving end of sex discrimination? Mm. I'm just looking for a report. They did the last place I worked. Gender stereotyping in the workplace. I think it would impress the CEO if you worked some of it into your speech today. Norman? Norman? <laughs> Mr. Platt? back to his office? I'll check. Hello? Joan, hi, it's Norman here. Um, I see you've got Hillary with you. Uh, put her on, will you? Miss Drummond, there's a call for you. I'm transferring it. Hello, Hillary Drummond. Hello, Hillary. It's Norman here. Where the hell are you? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Just had to dash off. Um, I'm back in my office. Um... Had some emergency work I had to get on with, and um, I tell you what, why don't you carry on with your chat with the CEO, and uh, maybe we can meet up after lunch. Just... Norman, I'm in your office. I'm in the toilet. <laughs> I just popped into the bathroom. I didn't realise you were out there. You got a phone in your bathroom. Yes. Yes because of my bowel problem. Oh. That's why I'm dashing off like that. 
bit embarrassing, really. Couldn't really mention it, of course. I'm so sorry. I didn't realise you were ill. Oh, it's all right. It's just a world-class attack of the runs, that's all. Hello. Just helping out with Mr. Platt's plumbing. Couldn't get maintenance to touch it. I mean, can you believe those people? So, uh, what do you think? Um, after lunch? Lunch? Yeah. Yeah, after lunch would be best, I think. Is there... Anything I could get you? It's all right. I've uh, set my secretary up for something. <laughs> Honestly, the things we do for our men. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I I'll leave you to it then, Norman. I'll leave you the report. Remember, gender stereotyping in the workplace. Get it into your speech. Fine. Absolutely. I'd better get back to my office. Yes. <laughs> France. Only forty nine pounds. Sail from Dover to Calais or New Haven to Dieppe. You drive, we'll take the car. Stenaline, the next generation of ferry company. After eating strong food like pickles, chew Double Mint for minty fresh breath. You never know when. You might need it. Double Mint for minty fresh breath. What he's trying to say is, the Argos sale is now on. And uh, you'd be a dummy to miss it. Shake. next generation of ferry company. Platt's office. This is Mrs. Platt. Oh, hello. It's about my husband's suit. He's got quite the wrong one. <laughs> Excuse me. Hillary. I mean, good eye, Miss Drummond. I didn't expect to see you here. I work here. I oh, know that. I thought you were seeing the CEO. He cancelled. How did you know that? I didn't. I, di I didn't know. I, I, I. When, when I said seeing, I meant dating. You thought I was dating the CEO? Well, obviously I'm wrong. I, I just assumed you were dating because you got the job. <laughs> not that he gave you the job because you had sex or anything. I'm not saying that. I mean that would be really silly. I mean, not that you're bad at sex or anything. I mean, I'm sure you're really, really good at it. You know, everyone says so. Not that everyone knows, of course. It's just so obvious that you have sex a lot. Well, not a lot as such, but that you do it really, really well. I mean, I bet you could do it professionally. And you are? I don't know. You don't know? No, my voice is shut. You find your behaviour distinctly odd. Yeah, oh, no. Re really, really sorry. Sorry. Where were we? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Platt's office. 
It's Mr. Platt. Listen. Oh, Mr. Platt, where are you? Your wife was looking for you. Actually, I'm right. Nick. What? What does she want? Your suit. You've got the wrong one. She's taken the suit. Well, she's arranged for it to be collected. I've got it in my office. No one's to touch it. No one's to touch it. Do you understand me? Well, your wife was very insistent. I really think I ought to. An order. Do you understand me? The suit mustn't leave the building. But what if she phones again? She gets ever so cross. Prue, Prue, listen. It's a plot. <laughs> it is an evil plot to steal my suit. <laughs> like in the films. Do you understand me? A plot? Yes. And together, we have to foil it. You with me? Do you know, there was a suspicious character hanging about. Hang on a moment. Through! Wait! <laughs> Mr. Platt, there's definitely a suspicious character hanging about in the vicinity. That may well be. The man who's going to steal my suit will not be a suspicious character. He may well be disguised as a dispatch rider. <gasps> but on no account, under no circumstances, must he get hold of that suit. Stop him at all costs, you got me? Could you just give me one moment? Prove! 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 hell is going on? Oh, good day again, Miss uh, Drummond. I expect you're wondering why I'm lying here on the floor. The thing is, I'm just giving Prue here a lesson in the old uh, self-defense. The trouble with you English Sheila's, you don't know how to handle an angry Bruce when you see one. <laughs> Mr. Platt popped out, by the way. He's, uh, he's just popped down in the old conference hall. Have a little word with those divisional managers. But well, that's the thing about old Norman, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> work, work, work. Oh, I don't know. The thing I will say about old Norman, and he's always been uh, <laughs> a wonderful brother to me. Brother. We're twins. Twin brothers. Though obviously I was born in Australia. <laughs> and so was he. Because we're twins. Of course, a bit embarrassing for him, me being a, a rider here, so I usually keep my helmet on. Mr. Platt. No, I'm not Mr. Platt. I'm <laughs> Mr. Platt. Oh, dear. Mr. Platt. Oh, God. Oh, my God. 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 What's wrong with you, then? <sighs> She doesn't believe me. She didn't believe a word. Well, even I didn't believe you, sweet pea. Oh. I mean, twins. Oh, they're nothing like him. I am the real Bosk. I'm Mr. Platt. I'm Norman Platt, for Christ's sake. Oh. Oh, God. I don't believe it. I'm finished. Oh, I see. I get it now. I've ruined my career in one morning. Have you, honey? Why? 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 I've just convinced my new boss that I think I'm my own imaginary biker twin. That's the kind of thing that gets mentioned in your annual performance evaluation. Oh, God. Go away. Go on. Go away. I, I need to die now. I've got an idea, honey. I've got a little plan. Go away. Just a moment. Go away and stay away. Oh. Oh, my God. Now. You get into your nice suit, and I'll put on your biker gear and pretend to be your brother. And then Miss Drummond won't think you're mad anymore. What? Because you'll have to do the voice like a ventriloquist on the telly. Have you seen them? They're ever so clever. That's your plan? It's good, isn't it? That is without doubt the worst plan in the history of the entire universe. Well, that's very nice, isn't it? Norman, isn't it about time you were uh... gone? I want you to put on this leather gear, uh, put on an Australian accent, so and pretend to be my brother. No, I mean, I do approve of adventurous sex. But... Where'd you keep the um, biker's gear? 
can't do an Australian accent. Gordon, I don't care. Just do it. I'm going to do my speech right now. Gordon, Gordon, she's coming back. She's just coming back. Mr. Platt? <laughs> Mr. Platt? <laughs> Mr. Platt? Oh, please come out the bathroom, she's here. <laughs> Good day again, Miss Brown. I'm sorry about the confusion earlier, but everything seems to be back to normal, yeah? What the hell is this? What's going on? What? Nothing's going on. I can't see anything going on. What are you doing? Well, you see, Mrs. Platt phoned uh, about her husband's suit. Apparently, he's got the wrong one. And it takes two of you? No, just me. <laughs> well, g'day all. Uh, Mrs. Trapp phoned again. Asked me to pick up a husband's suit. Apparently, he's got the wrong one. dispatch riders to carry one suit. Can anyone explain that to me? Can anyone explain anything that is going on in this stand office? Because I think I need some help here! Oh, sorry about that, Miss Drummond. Oh, God, I've got to help with that suit. <laughs> What's going on with you guys? Nigel! Nigel! Please give me this suit! You give me this one first. Why have you stolen one of us? Nigel! I am about to give a speech on stage to every divisional manager in the southeast in front of my new boss. And I'd rather not do it naked. That would be a bad thing. We've got to move! Nigel, give me this! Give me this! Nigel! Oh, hi, everybody. Uh... So, uh, uh, well, without any more ado, let's get on with it. Um, and let's have a nice, big round of applause for, uh, for my man and, uh, your man. Um, uh, Norman Flat. <laughs> Um, he'll be out in a minute. He's here. Who is the CEO? Oh, God. Okay, I can do this. I can turn this around. This is my chance. Now I'll show that bitch something she's never seen before. <laughs> here today to talk about a very important thing. I'm here today to talk about gender stereotyping in the workplace.
next Tuesday at 8.30 on Central. The theatrical agents provide the comedy and will only be taking a small cut in the 10 percenters.